Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sim and let's get into this new device that just just came in the mail from Elecro. Not sponsored by the way. This is the Hackberry Pi CM5. It looks like hmm, they got a little idea of what they wanted to do. Uh, maybe saw this guy or something and here we go. It essentially looks like it was the Raspberry Pi 5 version and they modified it a little bit to add a CM5 module. We'll get more into the, the details of that in the teardown. But uh, when you get it in the mill, you're gonna get it in this nice little pouch. Um, it feels really nice, but it has a weird smell. It's, I don't know, kind of, I don't know. You'll see when you get it. But uh, you get an included uh, heat sink for your CM5. Doesn't come with it. You have to supply that on your own. I think that's a first for these devices. They usually included the Pi, but um, I don't know about the five or four versions, but I know with the zero, they did include them. You get your toolkit. This 3D printed thing you see here is to apply the bolts for the heatsink. So if you don't know what that is, that's what that's for. So let's take out the device. We have our cavity here for the CM5. It's pretty recessed in there. I like the way it fits. If you get a fan heatsink, it might stick out a little bit and you do have the header in there for it. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's right there. Um, let's take this out the plastic really quick. This is the 9900 version. That's why it kind of looks like the keyboard is very small. Um, if you're used to the 9900, this is gonna be fine. You won't have any problems with this. It's exactly the same, like the zero. The only difference we have here in the front is a touchscreen. It is the same resolution. It's a Hyperpixel 4, four same, it's a Hyperpixel 4, same screen as the zero, but you get a touchscreen on top of that. So, you know, when you're browsing, you can just scroll like this and go up and down. It is nice for Android. I've seen a couple people run Android on the CM5 and you know, you can navigate like a normal phone. So that's pretty nice. You do get a SD card slot. If you choose to use this, I use an SD card. I don't have an SSD yet, I haven't ordered it. You still get this port for device uh, test devices. I forgot the name of it. Uh, and we got a full size HDMI. That is nice to see there. Full HDMI out. I think it can do 4K. The CM5 should be capable of 4K, so that, that'll be really cool to test. On this version, we do get a power button. Really cool to see. I thought this was a Bluetooth button because if you guys don't know, the speakers in this device are Bluetooth. And I have been using a version of this. I have a Q20 that I have been using, and I will say off the bat, the speakers are pretty trash, but the fact that they exist is, is great to see. You know, we have audio. Um, you still have your keyboard switch. You can toggle on and off the keyboard. It's pretty hard to flip. On the other side, you have two USB 3s. You can still use the adapters that you have from your Zero. They are on the right side, so they fit just fine. On the bottom, we still have our four charge indicator lights for the battery and a USB-C. I don't believe you can use the keyboard as a USB device. I think you can, actually. I think you can. And we have our on and off switch here. Uh, one big problem I've noticed using the Q20 version is that I often flick this by accident, and it's really frustrating. So in the future, I might modify this. You might see mine look a little different down here, but... Yeah, that, I don't know if anyone else has dealt with this, but that is pretty annoying, especially specifically on this device. On the Zero, I didn't, it's in the same spot, but I didn't really have this problem. So it's kind of strange. Maybe it's just because the profile changed, so my hand's a little bit more out. Um, and it is, it is really heavy. The, the back is uh, full, it looks like aluminum. And so is the front, so it's really heavy. Like, it's it's, it's a solid device. And um, at the top, we still have our screen brightness and our activity LED right there. So pretty similar. If you're familiar with Hackberry, you're going to feel really comfortable with this device. Um, 
I do want to tear this down so we could take a look at the insides. I haven't done that with my tester. Um, I've only taken off the back piece. I actually removed the back piece because it was just really heavy and I 3D printed my own just to save on weight. I kind of want to do the front as well. It's just a really heavy device. But you do get that uh, Apple magnet. I, I don't know. I don't use it, but there's like a magnet you can attach this to like stands and stuff and it'll hold it up. That's cool. I don't use that stuff. So that's going to be lost on me. Let's get right into the teardown and let's see what's inside this guy. Okay, guys, just cutting into this part of the video. I did 3D print a front plate for the device. It feels extremely light to me versus what it was before. I also created a custom back plate that has vents for an SSD. I did start using an SSD after this video. Um, I will be providing all links to these in the description below. I also created a blank version that doesn't have the recess for the magnet. If you guys want to take it, create your own, submit them. That'll be great. All right, now back to the video. All right, so I'm not going to be using the included Allen keys because they are frustrating to use. So I'm going to use my screwdriver here. The screws you'll notice don't really go that deep. They just go through the case and into the front panel. And if you screw these in too tightly, the screw holes on the top are behind the touchscreen, so you can damage that. So be careful when putting this in. Do not over tighten these. Okay, so there's your four screws. I'll put them aside here. Easy enough. It's a pretty simple back plate. See, you do have your magnet there. And you can attach it to things. I don't really care about that, but let's put this to the side. We have our five thousand milliamp battery in my test this thing lasts quite a while um quite longer than the zero for obvious reasons <laughs> um well the zero with the cm4 in it but i don't know about the actual zero but we do have our ssd slot it is a 2242 i believe yeah it's right there and you can i think you can put mvme all right so you have a rtc clock with the battery there so you can save time. This is the Bluetooth module for the speakers. Kind of weird. Don't know why they went that way. Um, you could have just done USB. I don't know if there was a limitation there somewhere. Um, you know, anyone comment in the comments and let me know why they did it that way. But just feels weird to me. If you have a hub, you should have four ports. But uh. That's the way they did it. The speakers are actually near the keyboard, hidden away. Um, I don't know if we can get that deep. Let's see if we can take this thing apart. We have our buttons. I'm going to put those over here so we don't lose them. All right. So it seems like the battery is glued down. I'm going to unplug it just so we don't have power going through. And then we will take apart the front. So to wrap things up on the back, the layout looks pretty similar to the old versions of this device. You know, USB-C power, your lights, all, you know, all the components to do that. The additions are the SSD, which is really nice to have. I can't wait to test that. I just don't have an SSD. Bluetooth audio, it's, it exists. That's great. RTC clock, that's pretty good, especially if you're doing ham radio stuff. That's really nice to have. Full-size HDMI. I could have it or not, but it is way better to have it, especially because it's a full size. You can bring a monitor with you and just have a go. Like that is amazing. I like that. USB is great. I love seeing full size USBs. There's so many peripherals you can use with that. Pretty solid design. Now let's check out the front of this, if we can even get it off. All right, the front feels way more secure than the back was. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to take out the ribbon cable for the screen because it seems like it's pretty tight. Oh no, it stays on there. Okay. So there are your screw holes. They do go behind the screen. If you didn't notice, they slide out and slide in. 
So you really have to be careful when screwing that in. But that is cool. It just it does come out. There are the tiny speakers. These things should be pumping out good power, but I think it's just a controller they're using for the Bluetooth. It just they don't it doesn't get enough power. There might be a mod we can do down the road. I do have USB audio amps that I've used in previous videos. If you've seen on my channel, we might be able to just connect that up. If there's a spot for it where I can hide it, I can definitely do that. But that is a future video. So the way they mounted the keyboard is exactly the same from the uh, Hackberry Zero. You have your 3D printed bracket and then your little connector right there. So that's nice. You can swap these out if one breaks. You could just put a new one in. That is amazing to see. The screen is glued in. I will show the layers. It's a pretty similar mounting to the Zero where you have a 3D printed bracket and then the screen is on top. The SD card is in a very similar location. All that's the same. I'm not going to try to pull this out off right now because I don't want to damage it, especially with that touchscreen glass on the top. I, I don't want to break that, but this is what the Hackberry Pi CM5 looks like torn down. That is pretty cool. Pretty nice design, I've got to say. I like that. Now, I'm going to put this thing back together and we will grab the Q20 and I will take you through some of the features, some stuff that's different than your normal Zero or my CM4 modded version. All right, our device is fully back together. Now let's take a look at its sister device. Same exact thing, just different keyboard, the Q20 version. Now I'm gonna boot this up for you guys. It does make a nice little chime when you boot it up. I don't know if you guys heard that, it's pretty low. Uh, <laughs> little speaker is lying. Um, you're going to notice I do have a dongle on the side of this. My CM5 does not have Wi-Fi. This is a light version without networking. So I did have to buy a dongle and install the driver for it to work. That's the only difference between this and a regular CM5. This is the eight gigabyte version. Um, the touchscreen does work. Everything is working there. It is nice to have, um, Let's open a browser. So the speeds are not going to be crazy. I'm using an SD card. If you're using the SSD, you're probably loading up pages relatively quickly, and that's great. So I'm just going to open a web page. Let's see how long it takes to load. Um, let's see. So that's pretty fast. It is a CM5. You'd expect no less. So there's a scrolling, um, while it's loading, it might be pretty choppy, but like right now I can go crazy and it's working great. I think multi-touch works. Yes, it does. You can zoom in, zoom out. Honestly, I've used the zero so much or slash my CM4 that I've gotten used to just pressing this and scrolling with my finger. So for someone like me, the touch screen isn't crazy you know it's it's not something that i say oh i need this device for it but i do like having it i do find scenarios where i do find myself using it a lot more than the key combo even though i'm very used to doing that um it is nice to have especially once i get into like i said before android testing that touch screen is going to be really important for me the typing experience compared to the 9900 i will say night and day i have very large hands, if you guys haven't noticed. And having the Q20 keyboard over the 9900 is so much better. It's not even that much bigger, but it's just that little bit does help. Just having the, you know, the keys aligned straight and the small amount bigger keys is way better to type on than the, the 9900 was. I got to be honest. If, if, you, if you're someone like me, you feel like you have big hands, get the Q20. Like this keyboard is fantastic. It's just a straight version with bigger keys. Like that's, <laughs> it's amazing. See how easy that was. It's like, I find myself looking at the keys on 9900 and I'm just like, oh God, this, this is so hard, but I do enjoy that. 
Um, performance is great. Battery life has been amazing. I haven't really measured it, but from using it day to day, I have noticed that it lasts about three hours ish. If you're not watching videos, which let's be honest, who's watching videos on this? I, I kind of have, but the battery life is much more improved than my uh, CM4 zero, you know, amalgamation thing here. So I will have to give it that now. To compare the two, performance-wise, obviously the CM5 will destroy the CM4 any day, right? It, it's got it there. But you have the same screen, you know, SD card, same thing. Keyboard, if you get the 9900 on both or Q20 on both, they're essentially the same thing. And you have a smaller profile in, the, in my CM4 mod. And I'm not doing this to push it. I don't sell this. This is my personal device. I'm just comparing it for the video. And that's it. Because I'm the one that's going to be using this device. So I am going to compare it. Personally, this thing is really heavy. Super heavy. I do like it. I can throw it in my backpack and I do use it. But I'm just going to put that out there. This is really heavy, especially if you use the magnetic back. That adds a lot of weight. I do highly suggest just 3D printing a plastic back because this thing's heavy. This thing's way slimmer. It's easier to hold. I can one hand use this thing versus I don't think I can do that on this. Like this is, I mean, with the touchscreen, you probably can, but this thing's still pretty, pretty big compared to the, my CM4 version, you know? So on some ends, I do like the CM4. On some things, especially performance, if I'm doing something heavy, the CM5 obviously wins. It's up to you, the person, to figure out what works for you. For me, I can live without the touchscreen. Therefore, I'm going to choose my CM4 a lot of the time because of that convenience and the, the, the just the lightness and smallness of the CM4 version. Um, but again... I do see the alert of this device. It is a great device and good on Cytal for designing this. This thing is incredible. Like it's nice. Um, future plans for this thing. We are going to do some mods. I mentioned earlier in this video that I've been having issues like flicking the power button when I'm holding it. I like to put my finger like this and a lot of the time I flick it and just turn it off in the middle of use. I'm going to be designing something to prevent that because that's frustrating for me maybe adding like a little bit of material right here so that my finger doesn't hit it which is weird because i've never had this issue on this device on the cm4 like it i don't know what's going on there but that i might 3d print a front bezel in plastic be just trying to reduce the weight of this device like i said it's it's really heavy um that shouldn't be too hard since now I know that this can come out and it's not glued in. So I might actually do that as soon as possible. But um, yeah, look out for those videos. We will be having a lot of fun. We're going to be testing a bunch of operating systems and software on this thing. And we're going to see what it can do. We're going to have official, you know, sim official battery test. I do have two. We can do different scenarios and test. Let me know what you guys want to see in the comments. I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.